So with a simple software update, at last we now have matrix headlights on a Tesla. Uh, so at the moment this appears to only be for the Model 3 Highland. And it should follow as well for the previous version of the Model 3. So not the earlier ones in the UK, but the 2021 facelift for the Matrix headlights. However, at the moment, my Tesla Model 3 Highland has Matrix headlights. I actually think they're pretty good. So what I did last night was just film my journey home. And it's a particularly useful point because my journey involves crossing the new forest where we have lots of wild animals walking around the road. And so... Uh, having good headlights really makes a difference. I've been saying for years that, come on Tesla, you're behind with uh, headlight technology, we need matrix headlights, and we've got some really good lights in Polestar and Audi and BMW i4 laser lights and million pixel digital lights and Mercedes. Um, but at last now, a Tesla has matrix. So I'm gonna take you along my journey home. I'm gonna pause and show you a few examples of how it works and what it does, and ultimately, I think it's pretty good. So here we are leaving my office. Right, here we go. So just pulling out of our industrial estate. Now normally they wouldn't be this low on the ground, they level off nicely, but you'll see in a minute they're gonna level up, go to high beam, go to matrix, and then suddenly also blank out an oncoming vehicle. So uh, matrix technology is really good. And uh, it, uh, okay, these are not laser headlights that you can get with a BMW. Right, you just see there, just pause that. You can see that they leveled and then there, then they went to Matrix and they blanked out that car immediately. So they did three things at once there, leveled, high beam, and then to Matrix, then it's lit up again. And this is the point of Matrix, it can blank out the vehicles that are um, in front of you, but it can leave a full high beam everywhere. See there, now that vehicle approached there, so I've still got a full high beam here, but the headlight is dipped around this vehicle, so there's no bright lights shining to the vehicle. They've dipped over here because of these. There's a bit of high beam here, and there's a bit of high beam here. Now this is really useful for me to have really good headlights because this commute, as you'll see in a minute, goes across sections of the new forest where um, it's A, very dark, but B, we have wild animals allowed to roam. So we have horses, ponies, pigs, and all sorts of things, uh, deer, and so having good headlights really makes a difference. Now, an issue there, I was in a street lit area, and unusually the Matrix was working there. So if that was a Porsche Taycan, in street lit areas, they don't work. They're just a flat level beam. You don't need them. I think that makes sense, but the Tesla does it anyway. Um, now, that's probably something I think they could consider uh, whether that should work in street lit areas. And also, the other criticism I have so far is when you approach a junction, here, the high beam. Now, did you see that dip there? And then there's a car passing there, now, this is still high beam here, and I've had it on occasion where it does shine into the side of a car, but you will see in this clip in a second, how look, full beam, and then have a look at as this car approaches here. Now this car, it's high beam here, but as this car comes across, and you'll see how very quickly it is turning the segments of light off, and at no point does the headlight shine into that car. See how it's all turning off the lights and the light beam is here. There's the top of the beam, not going into the windows. And then you'll see it re-illuminates. So in that case, it actually worked fine, but I have had it where well, at junctions, it does shine into the side of a car. And I think what Tesla could just quite simply do is say, well, look, below speeds of uh, you know, 15 miles an hour, don't, don't activate it. Or if you're approaching a junction, don't activate it. Um, but that's about it. I'll try and show you here how it works. So look, it's blanked out these signs because it thought with the reflection there might be headlights of a car, realized it wasn't, and then re-illuminated it. So now we've got a full high beam, come around the corner, and here, this is illuminated here, but can you see the line of the headlights is blanked out along there, so nothing shines into that car, and then it re-illuminates all the way across there. And this is a particularly bumpy, horrible section of road, so I'm going quite steady here. This road here is terrible. And again, in the ground, you can see segments of the headlight disappearing and coming back on. I can see better than you can see in this video, of course. I can see further, because um, in person it's better, but although this is fairly low quality, I thought it'd be good enough to sort of show you how it works, and explain what Matrix does. So, car on coming here. Now, if this was automatic high beam, low beam, A, Tesla so far would probably just have a high beam on and this car couldn't see anything. Uh, they've been quite slow to react and very poor. But here, it's actually blanked out this car here, but has kept this left-hand side illuminated. Pretty crucial. 
and you can see as this car passes I've got a full high beam here so I can still see all this but it's now then re-illuminating across here now if it just gone to dip beam I wouldn't see that left hand side and then you can see that re-illuminated after dipping from that other car passing and seeing this left hand side on both well both verges of the road are really important when we do have wild animals and you see up ahead in a moment as I fast forward there'll be um, some horses and ponies in the road as a perfect example now see how quickly that reacted to that vehicle coming around the corner let's just go back a couple of seconds there it's in full high beam I know before this would have just been high beam for a little while and taken a while to dip down but there it reacted straight away to that vehicle which is good and then it's re-illuminated this section here but kept this bit blanked out so now I've still got the high beam along this hedgerow but it's blanking out the section see it's even illuminated here on the right on the left but not high beam where these other vehicles are and then it really makes a course see all the segments coming back on they kind of like a load of vertical segments dip that out so what I'm really pleased with here is its speed of reaction that seems to be just fine and as good as any other car to be honest um, there are cars like the BMW i4 and some of the Audis with laser headlights that probably have a bit more power for distance but these are fine and again you can see here illuminated illuminated but this section here is just blacked out so we're not blinding that car in front uh, but the the power of these lights is good the spreads good um, and even at higher speeds it gives enough forward distance to be able to dip the you know to be able to stop if there's something I just think maybe if you're in Germany and you have very high speed autobahns, whether that's when a laser light with more power would have been an advantage. But certainly in the UK, and for most applications, these are good and so much better than what we've had before. So you can see it illuminating, dipping. This is illuminated. So there's a pedestrian or something here, I'll be able to see them. And it's blanked off to the right. As we come in here, full beam, blanking off this car here. Okay, right, I'm going to pull out onto a section of faster road in a moment, but again, as I approach a junction, prime example. This is where it should just dip now, but that's high beam. Now, it did respond to that car, and now it's gone back to high beam. It does not need to be high beam here, and it dipped because that car passed. And again, it does seem to react quickly, but it just isn't really necessary. I think it's a risk not worth taking. And sometimes when you slide onto a vehicle, you don't see... Um, the lights to react in time. Now here, flat beam pattern, nothing being um, blinded by this vehicle in front. There's illumination here, you can see it reflected in the lights, and then you'll see this segment illuminate in a second here, and then it re-illuminates there. Again, oncoming vehicle, we can see sections in the road here, you can see where it's come, going on and off, and then re-illuminates across. Uh, so that's good. It works well. This is actually about 55 miles an hour along here, although it doesn't really look it in camera. Um, but you can still see on sections of the road where parts are disappearing. See that how that segment there went dark? You can see that segment's disappearing there. Making sure we don't blind that. See, it's still fully lit up on the left hand side here, which means I can see if there was an animal along this uh, hedgerow. Okay, so I'm going to go forward a little bit now as I travel along this road. It continues to blank out and react quite nice and quickly. That's good. In fact, you can see there, see the beam on the road there? I know it's a bit grainy, but you see how this is dark? It's lit up here, but this little triangle here is dark because of these oncoming vehicles. It's still shining off to the left here. And then there we go, you can see it light up the road again. Again, little triangle section, reflection of the road going dark. Again, in person, you, you see this a bit more, if anything. But again, a way of demonstrating how they're working and the speed of reaction, even though it's a bit of a grainy video. Okay, so I'm going to come across here, travel along the road. Again, as I actually do that fast forward, you can see this section here is blanked out for this oncoming car here. Good. And we travel around. And I'm going to come onto a section of the road now which is notorious for having wild animals and horses and ponies and stuff like that. Uh, so again, at a junction, doesn't need to be full beam here. Just doesn't. And this is a junction where I've had a van pass before and it didn't even dip the headlights. And then now it could go back onto its high beam. It's just dipped it here because of that vehicle. It's keeping its left illuminated. 
vehicle will pass and then you'll see full illumination again. And there we go, you see those segments come back on. So I'm going to travel up this road here, which is notorious for having uh, animals on the road, usually horses and ponies. And in a minute, we will see some of them. So this is a prime example. And I'll let this bit just play and you'll just see what the headlights do. Again, there you go, full illumination. So seeing off to the side of the road here and seeing everything as much as possible is just critical, especially on this section of road. Now coming up on the left as I go to the brow, see there's animals there. Now I could see them. And if it was just a dip beam, I probably wouldn't have seen them because if this is cars I'm coming, it's just dip beam, I wouldn't see them. See how the lights are lighting up even the reflectors on this gate? So you can see how that's working. This, this section here is now darker because of this car. And this is quite well illuminated. Again, in person I can actually see more than you will see in this video. Now, this is a crucial bit coming up. We've got full beam again now, all the way across. You can see that's actually, you know, a couple hundred meters ahead there now. And I can see pretty well car on come in. You see it dips across here. This bit's still illuminated high. And then sections will uh, drop down as this car passes. And there you go. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then they re-illuminate as the car's passed, going off, going off, going off, going off, there we go. And then they re-illuminate straight away. And that's crucial because up here, I can already see there's a horse. In fact, there's two. There's one here and there's one here. So having visibility of these animals is what this is about. Or pedestrians. Now, you do get Mercedes digital headlights with millions of pixels, which are more powerful. We'll actually shine a little light path towards that item so you can see it in even more detail, pedestrians or animals. Um, but this is a really good step forward and this is so much better than we've had before. Uh, so again, I think I'll skip forward a little bit in a moment, it's going to stay because of some potholes. Now this Range Rover that comes over the hill actually, that was quite slow to dip his headlights. There we go, eventually they dipped and you see these mine are blanked out and then you see them re-illuminate. Okay, blanked out section as they pass. I can see all this high beam and then it re-illuminates. It's good. And so, right, I'm going to skip forward a little bit more. I'll drive through the very pretty village of Burley. You see in, 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 a, in a village centre, there's still like high beam. I don't think they really need to be there. There are other lights around. If there was a pedestrian, it would probably be a bit blinding to them. So I think when there's other lights around, they, they could dip in most cases. Uh, here we see the sections blank out for this car here. And then re-illuminate across so I can see if there's a deer about to run out of there, be a prime example. So I'm going to come uh, through the village, up the hill, into a slightly darker section of the road again at the top. I'll just see what happens with this car here. So you can see it's full beam, straight into that cottage. And we should see the sections of light blanking out here. It's gone darker, gone darker. You can see it's dipped. This is the highest level of light at the moment. But then now we'll see it re-illuminate. There you go. Okay, so the responsiveness seems good. No one's flashed me, which is a really probably the best sign. Usually if you're in a test and you're getting flashed, it's because your headlights are pointing all over the place, especially the previous generation of Model 3 and Y, or the current Y and the previous 3. We've got this very kind of L-shaped beam patterns so that anything to the left just gets blinded. That means even if you're in the outside lane of a motorway and you're on the left-hand lane, you get blinded. Now, as I'm just going to go back a little section. Have a look at the road surface in front as this other car approaches, and you'll see the segments of light from this car disappear. Kind of hard to spot, so watch here, it's full beam here, but you watch the segments of light disappear from the road. Off, 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 off. I hope that shows, then it re-illuminates this shining high beam here, high beam here, darker for these cars, nobody's flashing me. Then, you, do you see that spread come back across the road? There you go, that's how it's working. Uh, this is a, another car a lot further up there, but it seems to even be uh, visible on this uh, Tesla, because I can see Quite a high beam off to the left here. It's highly illuminated on the right here. Again, we get a lot of animals in this section. You see that section blank out as that car came along? There we go, and it's keeping that section blanked out. Still high beam here. I can still see all this left-hand side. Still beam here. They pass, then it re-illuminates. 
Good, right. Going forward a few more seconds as I then approach another junction. I'm going to come to some dual carriageway in a moment. So again, slow speed junction, full beam. Doesn't really need to be. Coming around onto a roundabout. And yes, I'm fine using the steering wheel buttons as indicators. So here, look, it says it's full beam. It's kind of going to be responding to other vehicles, but that doesn't need to be full beam. There's a fence protecting the light to the cars there. And then now it's realized there's cars in front and it's blanking them out. But it doesn't really need to be on high beam. Now, this is going to be a fast section dual carriageway. And uh, again, I'm doing my best to demonstrate it. But see how the left hand side here is highly illuminated. Well, I can see it. You won't see it quite so much in the video. But as I pass this lay-by that's coming up, it's quite critical. Again, there could be pedestrians, children running out of cars, animals, but this is illuminated. Now, I think this is quite important here. Now, look at the reflection in these road signs. And as, as I am here, the high beam is here off to the left, but you see that that's the start of the dark section it's making for this car in front. So let's go back a couple of seconds, and you can see that dark section for car in front. In fact, you can see the headlight beam here. There's the edge of my beam. Do you see the segments disappearing off? Go back one more time. The section disappeared off there as I'm tracking this car and it removed one of the sections of light. And you can see there from those reflections really clearly how it's tracking the edge of this car. Again, one more time. That's good. You can see actually this light here is coming from the right hand headlight and you, I've seen that in the rain and mist as well where this right hand headlight even shines across to the left here and then across to the right and then allows this blanked out section for the other vehicles. In fact as it's dark it's illuminated the central barrier and these will disappear now as the vehicles approach there it goes, it goes dark and then it comes back on that's now illuminated here. As the vehicles approach it go darker again. A little bit hard to show. What you can see here, um, and I can certainly see driving, is that the trees here and this path are all highly illuminated. See the reflections of those trucks here, so you can see the, the beam is in here. You can see the beam is shining from this street sign. It's not from the car in front because it's there as I approach it. And it's giving me that good visibility here. Now, believe it or not, I'm traveling about 65 miles an hour here. This looks slower on, on the camera. Uh, and as we approach this junction, this BMW in front is going to pull off to the left. And so, although I've got a high beam shining here, and I'm now going to the second lane, it's blanking out segments, so there's no light was shining high up on the side of that BMW as I go past it. Again, as I come past it here, you'll see my light level. This is my level of light on that car. Nothing going into the mirror or the windows. And then now I'm illuminating this bit here again, so I can see off to the left. Clever stuff, isn't it? Really good stuff. So I'm going to show you one more little bit as I come off of this dual carriageway in a moment. And that is here. Now I'm coming 65 miles an hour now off towards a roundabout. And my headlights are low here, but high here. And as I come down to here, can you see this segment start to light up again? There we go. See it's how it's now lit up this area. And what this is good for is this here is a pedestrian crossing and often I know it myself when I stood here cars don't see you because they're in dip beam and you only see this level of light but the fact I've got a high beam here is good again here is where it's not so good I'm on full high beam yet I'm in street lit area and I'm approaching a roundabout with cross traffic so at the moment I'm in high beam and that car there has just gone past then they've dipped see that dip I'll just show you one more time from this section of road here, coming back off the dual carriageway, illumination here, good visibility to cross in, my lights from full beam, look at the reflections and all these street signs, still full beam but then they're going to dip now, high beam dip, and they're doing all sorts of things here, look at the light patterns here, they're, they're lighting up and then they're dipping again to try and react to all these cars. But this is where it has the risk of just being a bit clumsy and being too bright to the side of cars. Now as I sit here, it is now in low beam because it's realised there's plenty of cars travelling past me. So it hasn't really caused an issue here, but I think it has the potential to. And I think just at certain low speeds, it may as well just dip or dip if there are some street lights. Um, but there we have it. Hopefully you can see from this video here that they are pretty decent headlights now. They're catching up. It's good. So... Um, I'm really pleased to have this update. Uh, it's always been, you know, such a great car 
but without matrix headlights was one of the real negative points but now it has this it's just fantastic uh, so last little bit as I come off that roundabout there goes to full beam and the car's going to approach the other way in a moment I believe and then you'll see these segments dip out so you see that I've got full beam here full beam here see the whole thing went dip and then now it's creating that shadow segment here and then it re-illuminates good stuff isn't it right I'm going to leave it at that thank you for watching this video I hope that's useful we'll try and get some more footage like particularly if it gets a little bit misty or foggy you'll be able to see from the beam patterns we'll try and use higher quality cameras I only had a, a GoPro on me at the time but I hope that's a demonstration if you weren't sure what matrix were and how they work then that is how they operate and um, a good chance to see a little bit about where we're at so far on the Model 3 Highland um, the matrix update should also follow for the previous cars, the 2021 onwards Model 3, Model Y. And so we look forward to testing that when it does drop as well. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in another video very soon. Make sure you stay subscribed to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications.